it's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 most racist moments in wrestling, WWE, etc. <sighs> if you've been watching WWE for a while, you've probably seen some borderline racist storylines, promos, and segments. Back in the Attitude Era, you could get away with saying certain stuff and doing certain storylines. Nowadays, obviously, if WWE was to try those same storylines and segments, they would definitely have an issue on their hand from the network, from thousands to millions of people wanting the, the show to be canceled. It would it would definitely be an issue. So we're going to check this out, man, and see if we can, you know, really dive deep into some of the, just the, the craziest storylines that at the time period... I guess was okay to bring up we can definitely check this out this is going to be interesting appreciate all the love and support road to 50k and uh let's do this man <laughs> oh this one right here yeah what's good in the hood just hold it down oh trying to take care God. of business keep it up I'm a unfortunately i will never forget that bro it's the <laughs> i'm like what it's what are you doing bro i, I just can't believe he said that on live television. There have been far too many instances of racism in wrestling throughout yeah. the years. A lot of these instances go on behind closed doors and only get revealed later down the line. However, there have been times when major wrestling companies such as WWE have been openly racist on their mm -hmm. television programming. Because of the color of my skin. But which times were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at oh, 10 man. of the most racist moments in wrestling. Woo. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification WWE. bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. I guess sometimes. <sighs> Y'all would also go subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Go channel, go content. Go subscribe to him. Number 10, Shelton Benjamin mocks Yoshi Tatsu. In 2009, WWE would debut the talented Yoshi Tatsu on the ECW brand. For his debut match, Yoshi would go one-on-one -on -one with WWE's best in-ring performer, Shelton Benjamin. Unfortunately, a pre-match promo by Shelton completely overshadowed Yoshi's debut. Before they wrestled, Shelton would mock Yoshi's Japanese accent, threaten to call Godzilla, and even mock the wow. traditional Japanese bow. Shelton's exceptional match skills would never question. It wow. was incredibly tasteless and it did absolutely nothing to help get Yoshi over as a new superstar. Make his debut back on ECW tonight. There was actually quite a bit of backlash online following the segment and wow. WWE thankfully moved away from Yoshi's first storyline being solely based on his race. Number 9, Jim Neidart is a KKK member. And without question, one of the most distasteful moments in pro wrestling history what? occurred at an independent show in 1995. Virgil was set to take on a wrestler known as Thug. When Thug made his way to the ring, it appeared as if himself and his bodyguard were dressed in KKK outfits. The bodyguard then revealed himself to be Jim Neidhart. The Thug and Neidhart then proceeded to lay out Virgil. It was one of the worst moments in pro wrestling history, and we'll never know why anyone thought it was a good idea in the first place. What? Number 8, JBL What in the hell? Even for back then, that was a little, that was way too far. That was crossing, that, the line is right here. They jumped over it. Like, yo, what was that? Yo. Goes hunting for illegal immigrants. Or when Brock Lesnar, Goldberg, and Stone Cold Steve Austin were all absent from WWE programming following WrestleMania 20, WWE urgently needed to create new main event level mm -hmm. stars, and one of these stars they would look to was Bradshaw. Bradshaw would be repackaged as JBL and begin a feud with Eddie Guerrero over yep. the WWE title. An element of JBL's new character was a hatred for seemingly anyone who wanted to enter the US. WWE wanted to emphasize this point of his character so much so that they aired a segment which featured JBL hunting for illegal immigrants on the border between Texas and Mexico. Towards the end of the infamous segment, JBL would confront a family and then proceed to physically kick one of the individuals as the family ran away. Number seven, wow. Rodney Max White Boy Challenge. Any white boy, any white boy, anywhere. Do we have time that for this? He can stand up. A Rodney Max White Boy Challenge was a short-lived gimmick for Mac in 2003. The gimmick involved Mac challenging any white member of the raw roster, and then Mac would proceed to squat. 
<laughs> that just what, that bro? That doesn't even make sense. Why was that a thing? Why? Answered it. This would last for a few months before the challenge was answered by Goldberg. And obviously, Goldberg was victorious. Yeah. But during this time period, Mac was a part of a stable with Teddy Long and Jazz, known as Thuggin and Bugging Enterprises. Now, the stable consisted of African American superstars who believed that they were being held back due to their race. Unfortunately, although the stable would add a lot of talented superstars such as Mark Henry and Jazz, the group never obtained much popularity. Mm -hmm. Number 6. Jinder Mahal impersonates Shinsuke The 2017 push of Jinder Mahal was one of the more controversial pushes. Remember when he was WWE Champion? Remember? Remember that? In recent memory, Jinder went from a virtual jobber to WWE yeah. champion in just a space of a month, and throughout Jinder's run, WWE fans struggled to take him seriously. Facts. His run as a WWE champion had some rather underwhelming moments, and yes. unfortunately for Jinder and WWE, a particular segment that he was involved in was universally panned. During his feud with Shinsuke Nakamura, Jinder would cut a promo on SmackDown which featured the WWE champion mocking Nakamura's accent, saying all Japanese people look the same and he would even compare Nakamura to Mr. Miyagi. The live crowd would chant that's too far and that's racist as Jinder continued. The backlash was so severe that the WWE was forced to issue a statement. A statement that read, just like many other TV shows or movies, WWE creates programming with fictional yeah, personality. I, I want y'all to understand, things have to get approved before it gets on television, before they exit into the arena before they you know walk down the ramp that all has to get approved by Vince most of the time it has to get approved by Vince that means it's been told and rehearsed and recited to multiple people before it got to Vince and Vince okays it then when they get the backlash they have to backpedal backtrack and be like oh we're sorry well, this is not how we really feel it all goes through Vince. Vince has the last say so on a lot of this stuff. So it's like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. These that cover real world issues and sensitive subjects. As a producer of such television shows, WWE Corporate is committed to embracing and celebrating individuals from all backgrounds as demonstrated by our diversity of our employees, performers, and fans worldwide. Number five, Kurt Angle is not a fan of the black people. A New Year's revolution in 2006 was notable for a number of things. Edge would win his first ever WWE title by cashing in on John Cena and Kurt Angle caused a lot of controversy thanks to a racist comment he made during a promo. Now for some context, Angle would cut a backstage promo alongside manager Davari. In the promo, Angle would state that his favorite country is France before randomly revealing that he wasn't a fan of the black people. The point of Angle's promo was for him to make a point that Angle could say anything and the crowd would always cheer for him. Now, although the comment was completely tasteless, WWE decided against editing it off the WWE Network, and as of 2021, it's still featured on the pay-per-view in its original form. Wow. And, and, you know, truth be told, I'm not a very big fan of the black people. Number four, Triple H. A storyline leading up to Booker T and Triple H. This right here actually legitimately upset me, and for a minute, it did not make me like Triple H for a while because they basically went with this storyline of Booker T wasn't good enough because he was black. They went the races route. And I'm thinking they're going to give Booker T the ultimate rub here and give him the W to beat Triple H, but they never did. Triple H still retained. So it was like, once again, racism prevail. And it pissed me off because I felt like at the time, I felt like Triple H really could have, if they're going to go this route with this type of storytelling here, with racism being the, the, the theme here, like you're not good enough because you're black, and you don't give the guy the, the rub because the fans wanted Booker T to win, you don't give him the dub here. I feel like I just didn't feel like Triple H really fought hard enough to give him that victory here to let him go over. Like, bro, I, for a while, this this really turned me off to wrestling, and it just turned me off to like Triple H and everyone that was behind on this. Cause like, bro, he could have gave him that win. 
If you're going to go this route, he could have gave Booker T the rub here. Triple H's match at WrestleMania 19 is without a doubt one of the most controversial storylines in WWE history. Yes. The storyline had racist undertones throughout yes. and one particular promo from Triple H a few weeks before WrestleMania was clear evidence of this. In the promo, Triple H would state, I think you're a little bit confused about your role in life here. You're going to get to go to WrestleMania, but the fact is, Booker, someone like you doesn't get to be world champion. People like you don't deserve yeah, it. Bro. That's reserved for people like me. That's where the confusion is. You're not here to be a competitor. You're here to be an entertainer. See? That's what you do. You entertain people. Hell, you entertain me all the time. Go ahead, do a little dance for me. Go ahead, give me one of those spinneroonies. Entertain me. That's your job. Don't be embarrassed. You're here to make people like me laugh with your nappy hair and your suckers. Well, sadly, it didn't stop there as the WWE would air segments which featured Triple H throwing money at mm -hmm. Booker, telling him to carry his bags, and even Triple H telling Booker to bring him a towel. Mm -hmm. Although the storyline was controversial, WWE could have made fans forget about the storyline if Booker simply beat Triple H at Thank WrestleMania. You. Instead, he didn't, and Booker lost clean to Triple H. Clean. And to make things worse, the finish of the match involved Triple H hitting a pedigree on Booker and then waiting a whole 30 seconds before going for the pin. Number three, Vince McMahon drops the N word. At the 2000s, the five right Survivor here. Series, so Vince McMahon great. would have a backstage promo oh with WWE Champion John Cena. To close the promo, the WWE Chairman would refer to Cena as the N-word and just walk off. Keep it up, I'm a Vince would then walk past Booker T and Sharmella, and Booker then proceeded to deliver his trademark catchphrase. Mm -hmm. He didn't just say that. And this, without a doubt, was one of the most tasteless and backward segments WWE yeah. have ever aired, and so it just so great. happens to feature the WWE <laughs> Chairman himself. According to Bruce Pritchard, it was a different time and admits that the segment doesn't hold up. He yeah. stated, I don't think it holds up well. Ah, probably so. Well, I think that there were people whose opinions were asked, and, you know, again, it's it just mm -hmm. a, a different time and a different place where you did different things that... Yeah, definitely a different time because he could not get away with saying that now at all. Not even close. not, you know, not things that hold up. When I go back and, and I'm into the Alfred Hitchcock hour now, taping it every single night, you know, you sit there and you watch some of the things of uh, on television of, of men just basically uh, slapping the shit out of women uh, back and forth as if it was just another day at the office. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just uh, time has a way of of making things cringeworthy. Mm -hmm. You know, again, it's it just different time, different place, different different mentality. The infamous segment has since been edited off the network, but it's still a clip that often gets shared around social media. Mm -hmm. Number two, blackface in WWE. WWE has unfortunately had a long-standing history with allowing their superstars to use blackface in a storyline. The first instance of this was with Roddy Piper who proceeded to wear half blackface and half body paint for his feud with Bad News Brown. Another infamous segment took place in the Attitude Era and it featured yeah. DX doing an impersonation of the Nation of Domination stable. In mm -hmm. the segment, X-Pac would impersonate as Mark Henry and would have blackface to try and mimic Henry. X-Pac has gone on record to say that he hates the segment and wish it never occurred. This segment has been since edited off the WWE Network, and the final instance of this took place in the Attitude Era and featured Goldust in blackface for Sounds a match with right. Flash Funk. Now the reason for this was at the time Goldust was going through an identity crisis and was trying out new gimmicks. And number one, Hulk Hogan's rant. In 2015, it was revealed that wrestling legend Hulk Hogan had gone on an anti-black rant during his leaked tape. In the rant, Hogan would express disgust with the idea of his daughter Brooke dating mm -hmm. a black man. Hogan would repeatedly use the N-word as well as it admits to being a racist. Following mm -hmm. this revelation, WWE would cut ties from Hogan, releasing mm -hmm. him from his contract, as well as removing him from the WWE Hall of Fame. Hogan would also have all his merchandise pulled and Mattel would stop making action figures of Hogan. Mm -hmm. As of today, Hogan believes that he's apologized to both the locker room and the WWE universe. However, some don't feel that way. But there you have it, folks. Yeah, because he's definitely back in WWE. <laughs> he definitely, I'm sure, has some merchandise with WWE. Yeah, that they... Uh, you know, and I, I don't want to be on my high and mighty horse and say people can't be forgiven if they truly are sincere about it. You know, people can be forgiven. So maybe he does have different sentiments about it. Who knows? But as it stands, he is has affiliation with wwe stuff so but yeah man this was this was a definitely uh interesting video i like uh different takes different type of videos like this you know what i'm saying it, it, it 
racism has played a part in wrestling you feel me so yeah definitely if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button comment down below let me know do you guys agree when uh triple h was going against booker t that booker t should went over like can, am i the only one that thinks that way am i the only one that feels like at that time booker t definitely could have benefited being the world heavyweight champion let me know because i do think in that time period he could have benefited from that but i appreciate all the love and support road to 50k appreciate y'all kicking it with me i'll see y'all on the next one peace